In this video I'll be replacing the motor brushes in a Hotpoint WM11 washing machine, both with the motor still connected to the machine and with it removed. These motors were used in all Hotpoint 95 series machines and the WM range, as well as a large percentage of the Creda models. Before you start work on any domestic appliance, unplug it from the mains power supply first. The motors on these machines are at the top so they're very easy to get to. Just undo these two screws and slide the top back about an inch or so and it will come off. The wiring plug on these motors altered a bit over the years, but the brushes remain the same, although there are a few different grades of brushes which relate to the hardness of the carbon. The brushes on these motors are held in place by a small tag on the housing. This tag locks into the recess on the motor casing and to remove them the tag has to be depressed and the brush housing pulled out. There are a number of ways to achieve this. You could use an angled tip pair of pliers or a pair of motor brush removal pliers like the ones I'm using. Or you could just leave the tag in with a screwdriver and pull the brush out. Although this last method does work, it is a bit more time consuming and not as easy as the first two options. When you take the brush assembly out of the bag, the brushes should be held inside a plastic housing to prevent them getting broken. You'll have to lever up a small brass tag that holds them in place. If you put your finger over the end, it will prevent the brush from shooting out when the tag's been lifted. Be extra careful when locating the brush into the motor casing or you could snap it. You might consider holding the brush inside the housing with your finger until it's seated in the casing, but if you take your time, it will fit without too much trouble. When it is fitted, make sure it's pushed all the way in so it locks, and don't forget to refit the wire. Depending on your method of removal, the side closest to the cabinet could be easier or harder. You may want to pull the container over to the left to give yourself a bit more room. Unfortunately, this will occupy one of your hands, so if you're using a screwdriver to lever the brushes out, this may pose a small problem. However, the new brush assembly will fit very easily on this side, but remember to push it all the way in. You should hear a click as it locks into place. If you would rather remove the motor to replace the brushes, or if you need to replace the motor itself, then this next section of the video is for you. This top nut and bolt allows for adjustment of the motor so you can tighten the belt, but it's also one of the fixings for the motor, so it needs to come off. If you push it down towards the container it will loosen the belt so you can remove it. There's no need to take the belt right out, just lay it down on the pulley, it will be fine. Make sure you undo the earth wire before removing the motor, or you could end up doing a balancing act with the motor in one end and the spanner in the other. The motor should pivot on the remaining bolt and the location point on the container. But if it's too tight, you may need to lever it back. Try using a hammer handle between the motor and the top balance weight. Once the motor is back far enough, you can undo the remaining bolt on the lower leg of the motor casing. It's far easier to leave the pecker and the cable attached to the motor until it's off, because you can't really see what you're doing down the rear of the machine. If you're not replacing the motor, they don't need to be removed anyway, and can stay put. Removing the brushes while the motor is out is much easier, and allows for a closer examination of the commutators and their condition. As I said earlier, there are a number of different grades of brushes for these motors, ranging from the very cheap and soft carbon, which tend to wear out very quickly, 
the laminated brushes which are much harder wearing and last far longer. However if one of the commutators become loose it will cause the brush to wear out at an extremely fast rate. In this case a new motor will be needed because the commutators are not replaceable. Never attempt to just replace one brush on these motors, even though you may get one brush more worn down than the other. They come in pairs so they should be fitted as a pair. The back end of the motor hooks onto a moulding on the container and the front end locates onto a metal bracket which is also attached to the container. Bolt the front end of the motor to the bracket and tighten it, but don't over tighten it because you've still got to pivot the motor over to fit the other bolt. If the pecker is still fitted to the motor then lift it up before refitting the adjusting bolt or you may get it wedged against the container and have to undo it all again. The outer sleeve of the pecker cable should have been fitted to the motor while it was out. If not then do it now and connect the end of the cable into the pecker. Adjust it so there is about a thickness of a 5 pence piece between it and the motor shaft. With the belt still on the main pulley, loop it over the motor pulley and pull the motor back to tighten it. You may need a lever of some kind to hold it taut while you do up the nut and bolt. Replace the motor plug and don't forget to refit the earth wire. The joints on these wires get a lot of movement during a normal wash cycle, so if you have a cable tie it's to your advantage to tie them to the harness or one or more of the wires could break and in that case you may have a job locating the fault. When you're happy that everything's tied down and tightened, replace the top, do up the screws and the machine's ready to be tested. On behalf of Selfix UK, we'd like to thank you for watching this video and hope you found it interesting. Goodbye.